All right, ladies and gentlemen. So today I'm gonna quickly go over what I usually do when I'm recording my games and um, how I export them. So basically, we'll go through what my settings are for DX Story, how I import my video files into Adobe Premiere. I run CS6, and then afterwards, how I run the files through Handbrake uh, to compress them down to about a fifth of their side, but size, but maintain the quality that it had before. So first, if you want to open up, uh, sorry. You want to get the codecs. So I'll put them in the description. Uh, there's a 264 VFW for 32 bit systems. If you're running 64, I suggest installing both. Um, I found that's the best way to run it. Uh, you also need the lame ACM MP3 codec, codec, and I've got that in the description, and it's pretty straightforward. And finally, Handbrake, which is free. Um, any video file you run through it, it will compress as much as it can while maintaining the quality. It's just fantastic. Uh, most video files I export come out at 1.25 gigs, and this thing crushes it down to 250 megabytes, and you cannot tell the difference in quality. So it's it's great for just backing things up and maintaining space. So the first thing you'll do is open up DX Story, and um, on the first screen. I know for MSI Afterburner, um, some people had issues with recording the numbers on top left, so I just have default settings, the first three checked off, and then movie capture and screenshot frame not checked off. And then for my example, I was running Bioshock Infinite, so that's the one it shows at the top in the profile. Uh, when you go into movie settings, which has the camcorder, fifth tab over, uh, the video codec you'll pick will be the 264 VFW. Click that. Uh, 15 key frame rate quality 100 everything here is defaulted 0 unchecked frame rate I do 30 file output file format AVI option synchronize video FPS and the width and the height I run is 1280 by 720 so after you have your codec checked off you'll go to configuration dialog the button next to it and just click that so this is the March 17th uh, build a lot of videos I see people using the older builds. I try to get the latest one. I don't know. Maybe it's a little OCD. I got. I got to keep on top of everything. The preset will be ultra fast tuning, none, profile auto, level auto, fast decode, zero latency checked off. And then in the new build, it lets you pick the color space. I just left it at convert to YUV 420. Uh, for me, I run at CRF with a rate factor of 15, a little better quality. Um, but here's where it's important. Output mode, make sure you click VFW. And then the 4CC, you're going to pick time X264, lowercase x. And I'm not running virtual dub hack. And then the decoder, I uncheck disable decoder. And then just extra for advanced users. From what I've told, some people said to type in dash dash K-E-Y-I-N-T, keyint, space 1 and that's gonna pretty much set up your codec you're good to go after that um, also when you're when you're done installing your codecs make sure you restart your computer and then that should make sure that they show up properly in DX story next you're gonna go to audio next tab over um, if you're starting this up for the first time you're gonna have one number make sure you hit the plus and it's gonna give you the second so it's gonna give you one and a two default setting record sound I have it set to speakers the codec you'll pick is the MPEG Layer 3 codec MP3. Top of the list, 320 kilobytes, 48,000 hertz stereo. Click on number two. Should be the same kind of setup. Drop down, pick microphone. I have the volume set to 50, not 51. And then the same thing, audio codec MP3, 320 kilobytes per second. And the final thing is two tabs over. So third from the left is going to be advanced microchip. I have enable multi GPU fix code for CPU processing, enable synchronous surface lock, and wait for available buffer. All checked off. Processing threads 8. So for me, the um, graphics processor I have running in my is basically a desktop um, replacement laptop. So the GPU is pretty decent, but it's not the best. So I like to run for CPU processing. If you have an incredible GPU, don't worry about that. And pretty much once this is all set up, you're good to go. Load up DX Story, load up the game. When you're in the game, you should see the numbers in the top left running green. For me, I have my hotkey set to control and F11. Hit whatever the hotkey is. 
it's going to turn orange. It's going to start seeing 30 FPS on the, the left is going to be the 30 number and that'll be your FPS and then the right number will be what the FPS is actually being written to the hard drive. So pretty much while you're recording make sure when you're done hit the hotkey stop the recording exit the game it's going to record to wherever you want it to. So for me I have this test folder set up so it would have named it Bioshock Infinite with the date and you're good to go. So after that open up Adobe Premiere I'm running CS6 I've also got a solid state drive that I'm running most of my programs off of so it loads up in two seconds. First thing you'll do is new project I have Mercury playback engine, time code, audio samples, HDV it's gonna say where do you wanna save your stuff, your project so I'm gonna use the test folder I'm gonna name it infinite I guess just something simple I'm, I usually delete it when I'm done with them anyways hit OK so for me what I found was um, when I was looking into the codex and why Adobe Premiere had trouble with the 264 codex um, there's these companies that make specific 264 codex to run with Adobe Premiere and when I was looking at it everything was AVC intra and when I was loading stuff into Adobe Premiere I was picking the basic uh, digital video 720p option and I would bring it in and it would say do you want to keep the sequence settings or change them over to what Adobe thought was best and I said change but every time I did the audio would desynchronize and about five six minutes in all of a sudden the audio is off by five seconds but what I noted, noticed in these companies codex they were showing off this AVC intra so I decided to try it out drop down AVC intra second from the top for me 720p and then AVC dash I 100 720p 30 frames per second and uh, just hit OK and it'll open everything up you're gonna take your file so what it's gonna give you is say this is my file here Bioshock Infinite the date whatever you're gonna wanna right click on that file and then click extract audio stream and that's gonna pull out both audio streams which is your voice and the speakers and it just makes it easier uh, for Adobe Premiere and yourself if you want to adjust the audio because um, I know when I record my microphone is sometimes competing with the actual speaker volume so I'll show you what to do in a sec so first drag your video file up it's gonna say do you want to change the sequence settings or keep existing make sure you keep existing settings so click that if you let Adobe choose what it thinks is best I don't know what it picks but that's what causes the problem so stick with keep sequence settings first thing I do right click on the video file and hit unlink and I take out the audio that's matched up with the video already because basically you're gonna be bringing both audio clips that you've also extracted into the mix so as you can see here this top one is my microphone audio and the bottom is the speaker audio so if you see this bar down here if you drag it to the left it's gonna shorten it down put everything in perspective so the first thing I do is for the speaker volume I click on it I go to clip audio options audio gain and then I put in minus eight decibels so it's gonna drop down the volume of the speaker so my voice is easily heard over the speaker volume but you're still hearing the speaker volume so pretty straightforward that's all I do um, this is just a test clip 18 minutes if you have anything longer say an hour just chop it up into pieces you want if you hit the C button it'll give you the cut and you can just chop straight down split up into parts basically so the next thing you want to do is hit control and M and that is basically gonna allow you to export the media file and otherwise you can go to file export media and you're gonna have this basic op option setting come up so for me I have it set to H264 the preset I have I have a preset made up which makes it easy for me um, and I'll go through the options in a sec export video export audio 1280 by 720 30 frames per second square pixels TV standard is NTSC which is North America if you're Europe then you're gonna be pal um, I don't know how much of a difference it makes on YouTube I just stick with North America the profile is high level 5.1 I have render maximum depth unchecked and for the next part 
the bitrate encoding I set to variable bitrate one pass. Most people say do it to two passes so the program has a chance to go over it once and do the best quality quality rendering. But when I I did a test of variable bitrate one pass and two pass and put them next to each other and there was literally no I didn't notice any difference. And when you do two pass, it's going to double the time it takes to actually export the file. So if you're trying to get stuff done, leave it set to one pass. It'll take about the length of the video, if not less. This 18 minutes would take my Adobe Premiere about 16 to export. So the target bit rate and maximum bit rate, both at 9, 9 megabits per second. And then the key frame distance is checked off at 30. The audio is AAC, 48,000 hertz, stereo, audio quality high bit rate 320 kilobytes per second and the precedence is bit rate and then for the multiplexer make sure you have mp4 uh, as the one selected and the stream compatibility is standard so basically what you'll do where it says output name at the top click it pick where you want the file to save so for me I usually do if I'm sleeping technically you could do 24 clips exporting while you sleep 8 hours of sleep every 20 minutes a file is done so what I found best was to queue it. And by the way, all three of these at the bottom are unchecked. So if you hit queue, it's going to open up Adobe Media Encoder, which is a separate program. And so see here, there's already one in the list. You can do multiple editions. Just keep queuing files, split it up, queue, queue, queue. And you can have a list of as many as you want. And then once you hit the play button in the top right, it'll go through everything. While you, I find it best to do it while you're sleeping so it's not getting in the way and it'll export every single file while you sleep wake up it's all done good to go so as long as you're running the AVC intra there should be no issues with the audio or the video being out of sync and it should play everything pretty well straightforward so when you run Adobe Media Encoder just close off Adobe Premiere it doesn't need to be open so we'll just close this and whatever so for me that 18, 18 minute clip was at 3 gigabytes when I exported it with the audio, everything cleaned up. It's down to 1.18 and uh, 1287, 20, 18 minutes. Plays no problem, but that 1.2 gigabyte file size uh, does make me happy. So what you want to do is open up Handbrake, and I'm going to give you some new settings you can use. So what you'll do is I'll go over all the settings, and then when you're done, just hit Add name it I name it default higher res because it's more of a compression the changes I'll make in these options and it gives you top quality great compression so the first thing you'll do source video file I name the file test open and it'll open up no problem there's the minutes chapters blah 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 so make sure the container is mp4 and you have web optimized checked off and then you'll want strict anamorphic cropping automatic video filters all off video h264 times x264 same as source variable frame rate so what I do is an average bit rate over constant quality and I set that to 1800 with two pass encoding and a turbo first pass so it'll go over the first time quickly second time that's where it gets the work done it should take about double the length of the video going over twice as long as you have a decent computer English AAC 2 channel AAC and then brackets FAAC Adobe Pro Logic Auto 160 subtitles don't worry about chapters don't worry about but advanced is where we get a little more in depth and really get it fine tuned to be a highly compressed video file but maintaining the quality so the reference B frame 6 maximum B frames 5 tick off these three and then pyramidal B frames default Adaptive, optimal, default, uneven, multi-hexagon, 9, colon, RD, refined in all frames. Motion estimation range, 32. Default, off, default, default. These sliders should be in the middle. Don't worry about touching those. And no DCT decimate, unchecked, unticked, unticked, sorry. And then once you're done, same thing. Browse where you want to save the file, what you want to name it. If you're doing stuff overnight, I usually say one file per hour you're sleeping so when you wake up things aren't in the way and still running pain in the butt just hit add to queue and it'll add, the, add it to the queue just like in Adobe Premiere hit encode you're good to go it's gonna run overnight basically takes that well, I'll show you an example 
um, say Bioshock Infinite. Here's my one record at 21, uh, my 21st chapter. And if you go into the compressed folder, that's what I name it, it's got it down to 268 megabytes from 1.24 gigabytes. So it's about a fifth of the size, which is pretty insane. Uh, saves on storage space, saves on upload time. Um, everything just seems, everything seems to run fantastic, and that's pretty much what I do every time. Uh, once you do it a few times, it's straightforward. You'll have no problem doing it in the future. Um, I'll make sure to add all the links in the description, and if you have any questions, just ask me. I'll check back often and see what I can do to help. And uh, if there's anything else I can go over in the future, I'll just make another video. It doesn't take long.